Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you a little bit about the history of Bursi. As you probably already know, Bursi too is made up of, or is a coalition, or started out as a coalition of 62 NGOs. Today we have more than 80 NGOs in the coalition, and the numbers keep growing. Of course, we couldn't understand why the minister uh, declared Bursi, well, he declared Bursi illegal actually, not Bursi 2.0, by the way, uh, because we are a coalition of NGOs within our fold. A coalition, as you can see, that is growing by the day. But I'll come to that in a minute. Let me tell you a little bit about the history of Bursi. Do you all remember Bursi 1 in 2007? That was the first Bursi. That Bursi consisted of non-governmental organizations, NGOs, as well as the political parties, mainly the opposition, in fact, the opposition parties. And Bursi 1 in 2007 was also a great success. I, I don't know if you all recall Bursi uh, 1 in the year 2007. Shortly after Bursi 1 in 2007, uh, which was also followed by, or around the same time, there were other rallies. There were rallies by Hindra, there was a walk for justice by the lawyers. All that happened in the year 2007. Then came the elections in the year 2008. Uh, and you know what happened at the elections in the year 2008. I think for the first time, people realized how important their vote was. And for the first time, people realized that their vote can truly make a difference. I, I was brought up in a family where we, my parents, we always exercised our right to vote. We always voted in every election. But there were many people till, who, who never used to vote because they never thought it would make a difference. But I think 2008 showed Malaysians how important our vote is and how each one of us uh, who can vote can make a difference. So that was the first person. After the elections in 2008, we then had, uh, I think many of the politicians who were involved in Versi 1 became MPs or, or went into state governments and certainly became Wakil Rayat and therefore became very busy. So the agenda of Bursi, even the first Bursi, the agenda was clean and fair elections, the agenda still remains, remained relevant. And two people from civil society uh, came to see me and they said, will you lead um, Bursi 2.0? And I said, why 2.0? Version 2, as you know, Bursi version 2. Well, we, uh, I said I'm prepared to do it, provided it is entirely a civil society movement. No political parties should be involved. Now, this was agreed by everyone, including the political parties who were involved in the first Bursi, and Bursi 2.0 then was set up. So, what is the importance? Why was it that uh, it changed its form. Why did it become purely a civil society movement? Why did we make that decision? The reason for that decision is because I believe, and we all believe, that it was very important that this fight for free and fair election, elections is a completely non-partisan citizens movement. Because to us, it doesn't matter who you vote for. To us, the message was not vote for X and don't vote for Y. To us, the main message was that the elections in this country must be free and fair. We don't care who ultimately gets there, who is ultimately elected, but they must go in 
by free and fair means. Now, why did we have the rally on the 9th of July 2011? Why that date, you could ask? Let me explain. After we were set up, uh, and of course now everybody knows about Bursay because of the rally. But in fact, the work of Bursay too, let me be clear, the work of Bursay too began um, more than a year and a half ago. We were actually conducting talks, we were actually having discussions with the Election Commission, many discussions, well not many discussions, one main discussion, we handed a memorandum, but we also had sessions with the Election Commission where we shared views at seminars and fora in relation to uh, electoral reform. Now what I can tell you is this, uh, the first meeting we had with the Election Commission, these meetings are all very cordial, very good, don't get me wrong. But nothing happened after that. Nothing. And you know why? Because they really believed, and you can see we're right, huh? they really believed that there was nothing wrong with our electoral process. So although they were prepared to hear us, they, the PR was excellent, they were prepared to hear us, there were no changes. So we were met, supposed to meet with the election commission again, and um, this was in this year, January, February this year, but then the, Sarawak, the Sarawak elections came upon us. So we decided, we were very frustrated trying to make suggestions, no changes, we were talking about postal ballot, we were talking about indelible ink here, that what the car dance bagainya, you know the tututan, lapan tututan. So, uh, and also uh, uh, for the cleaning up of the electoral roll, Bersin Khan Sinarai Undi. These are key features. So, we then thought, all right, we will wait and see what happens in Sarawak. We thought we will wait and see what happens in the Sarawak state elections. And as you know, and certainly the reports we were receiving, the Sarawak elections were one of the dirtiest elections. That those are the reports we were receiving. Dirtiest elections that we have seen. Because the vote buying was so blatant, so blatant. In fact, it was even captured on video. If you go to YouTube, you will actually see uh, 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 tapes, uh, or you will see videos of uh, people in long houses where stacks of money are given to them, uh, those sort of videos, you will see it on YouTube. So all of these things were captured on, on video. We also had reports about how uh, they used uh, military personnel to intimidate the people there, particularly in the longhouses. They would station them in the longhouses and they would frighten the people. Uh, you had ministers uh, threatening uh, the uh, uh, people of Sarawak that they should, they must vote for the government in power, etc., etc. There were numerous, numerous stories. 